Prahuvu, thank you so much for joining us. I have a special guest on with us today. But before we get started, before we get started, uh, make sure you guys go to dynastymirror.com. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also, my first round, I mean, I got released. There's going to be a new release almost every week. So my first round of children books finally came out. Guys, go to Amazon.com. Go to Amazon.com and get your children's book. Okay, this is the first one. Son Loves Me. Again, the son loves me. Go and buy it. Okay, let me give you a little preview. Guys, give you a little preview. Let's see, we're going to start off at. Here we go. Here we go. Give you a little preview. A little preview. So, uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, uh. That looks so, great. So, guys, go and support. Okay, go and support. The Sun Loves Me, written by Dinah Samir, illustrated by my brother, uh, Yashar Clemens. So, again, guys, go and support. I, in fact, I'm going to do a special reading probably tomorrow or later on, to, uh, later on tonight. But I have, uh, listen, more are coming. So, again, go to Amazon.com, all right? Type in the name Dynast Demir, all right? And you'll see The Sun Loves Me available now in print. Go and support, guys. I greatly appreciate it. You're so awesome. Thank you so much for the support. The Sun Loves Me, Amazon.com. Hardback's coming soon. Thank you so much. Um. So yeah, so Jackie, it's been a while. A long time, very long time. Jackie, let me ask you this. Do you think um, caucus is going on this year or no? It's still up in the air. We don't know yet. Don't know yet. I'm gonna lean towards probably not just because of the mass number of people. And wow. um, as you know, I'm in Los Angeles, everybody. Hey, everybody. Jackie Johnson of Profile Africa Worldwide. And I'm in LA. I came here about a month ago to engage in some media scenarios for a lot of Profile Africa's content and got caught in the coronavirus issue and decided to stay because can't go anywhere anywhere anyway. So, um, you know, uh, I know that most entities or events that's going to have 50 people or more, even 10 people or more right now can't happen. So uh, I just don't see the CBC actually happening this year. It's a too big of an event, people coming from literally all over the world. And I just don't think they're going to be able to contain uh, the security measures and the safety issues. They're not going to be able to cover all of that, you know, with those mass number of people. I just don't think so. Okay. Well, I, I hope, you know, well, what do you think this is there's going to be an end to this jackie i know this is something that probably going to be like normal the norm now you know we won't i mean things are just going to be different moving forward but when we get back to some type of normalcy especially in I, la where you guys are at well la's not moving anything for probably another good month i mean certain counties are opening up things. There's a big debate over the beach because a whole bunch of people went to a couple of open beaches over the weekend, last weekend, and now the governor wanted to shut everything down, but now he's resorted to closing down the beaches in LA County and a couple of others. Um, but I, you know, I, I would say a good month before we even get through phase one of some sense of normalcy, but on the um, U.S. level, you know, you guys in Atlanta are already up and running things. Yeah, for the uh, oh, no. <laughs> somewhat, somewhat, it's slowly, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, you know, they're they're reopening up the economy, you know, so. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. I think um, it's going to be state by state. I don't see D.C. doing anything either too drastic anytime soon. Be the global influx of people that they have coming in and out. So I don't know if by September uh, the Congressional Black Caucus will have done anything. It's highly unlikely that they will. You know. Um, also, I know things like essence. I'm sure that's canceled. Oh, that, that, that was essence was canceled. Definitely, and you know, I just think that a lot of things are now being pushed to 2021. Uh -huh. I really do. Yeah, 
I think that that's probably wise too, because you don't want to expand the um, disease any further by just getting ahead of ourselves without having the proper measures in place. So, yeah. So Jackie, how is this, let's see here, California hotels are scheduled to reopen June 1. Uh, T. Kelly, what properties do you work for? Uh, what, what brand uh, do you work for? Uh, so now me and you talk a lot, uh, Ms. Johnson, about Africa Plan 2020. How is COVID going to affect that plan? Like, Well, it's affected everyone globally. And I do know one of the things that affects us in the diaspora is depending on where we're from, and most of us are from the, uh, the Americas, um, we're not going back to Africa anytime soon, unfortunately, to many countries. They, I know South Africa and Nigeria and some others have absolutely blocked our visas from, uh, blocked us from entering. They're not accepting, you know, people from certain countries and we have the largest cases in the world. Not so right. therefore, you know, that puts a hindrance on our ability to travel internationally. Definitely. I well, hopefully I can get, well, I'm going to put it out there in the universe. Yes. By July, mid-July. Right. It'll open. And I'm going <laughs> to Nigeria for the Old Shoon Festival in August. I, I just. Well, I, I, I just got um, some media on uh, Lagos today, and they have absolutely closed off all their borders. No in-country yeah. traveling even until. um later in the month of may possibly well because i know i know in oshun state they had well they're i know they're opening up the airport back uh in, they're going to open airports back up in lagos um june 15th so that's good news mm, yeah. um so you know i think june they're gonna because you know we're, they're gonna start slowly because i'm saying is once america starts opening back up as a whole the world will follow will follow and one, yeah, one of the things I'm learning about being here in Los Angeles is how powerful um, legislatively the state is. I know you're from California, and I just didn't know that, even though I've visited here many times, um, family and events. I just didn't realize that when something happens in California, it spreads like wildfire across the country or it sets a precedence for right. what will or will not happen. So I think a lot of eyes are on the state of California and New York, actually, in terms of the U.S., you know, globally, people are watching these two states to see what they're going to do to kind of anticipate what the whole country will do. Right, guys, make sure you hit that like button. Also, make sure you uh, share and subscribe if you are new. Again, guys, don't be stingy with those likes. Please hit the like button. And guys, you know what? I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway uh, here shortly. Shout out to Amadou uh, in, in, in the chat room. So so now should we change this now to Africa Plan 2021 or what, what should we do? Because, you know, we were 2020, 2020. Should we change it to 2021 now or? Well, for me, I'd look at the whole decade. That's how I've been planning my things and mm -hmm. emerging or starting certain things in this in this year. But you really have to have a 2020 and beyond in terms of a decade, because that's kind of how Africa's growth is being paced out by the decade. And sometimes within that decade, every three to five years. So even if someone can't get their show on the go, their whole story with Africa this year, it's not a crisis because the good thing is COVID-19 has balance the world. We're all on equal footing now. Everybody's on the same level. So everybody's got the same 24 hours as the next person. Most of us have the internet. So we have access to information and we can look to the future of where Africa is going and not consider this year, you know, a complete wash. But some things obviously just can't happen because we can't convene and come together physically neither can we travel over there. I say this is a great time to build your brand, investigate and uncover unique opportunities. The dollar is extremely strong, even right now in South right. Africa, it's 1882. I mean, it literally takes, I know this is like mega, 
hey, everybody, it takes only 5,000 US dollars to have 100,000 rents. And it only takes about just a little over $50,000 to become a millionaire in South Africa at oh, wow. this particular time because of how strong the dollar has become. Bad side of that is we can't go over there right now, but we certainly can look at some unique business opportunities. So I don't think it's all a wash. I just think that this is giving everyone an opportunity to regroup and to strengthen your assets, your personal assets in terms of what you offer Africa. Okay. Now, um, how is that, how is Africa surviving COVID-19? Because, you know, there were a lot of people who were upset that it wasn't impacting Africa the way it was, you know, Italy, Spain and America. Well, part of that is, too, because a lot of measures had already been put in place throughout Africa around Ebola when it happened a few years right. ago. So I think their readiness, um, they were a bit more prepared for something um, highly contagious and deadly, more so than even the U.S., because you see what our numbers look like. But um, I think that they're surviving. Um, I, I actually want to share some of the uh, intel I got on the numbers. It's not looking that bad compared to what we look like here in the US. I hope I can find that information. Um, yeah, and I was really surprised that um, many of the African countries had even less than 500 cases. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty amazing just because we can't, we can't even attest to that <laughs> in a county, literally. Right. Some counties yeah. here are way worse than that. Oh, I'm, not fine. I'm sure I will before our broadcast is over. Um, but yeah, and I just say that we need to keep our eyes on the daily report on, you know, our status as well as any country we want to travel to. I know the one of the ways they are surviving is that they immediately lock down their country right. and stop letting China, China and other countries who were affected, infected early on, not come in there. You know, because for a long time, I don't know if everybody was watching, but for a long time in the beginning, not very many black people was getting it in Africa. And at first there was this rumor that yeah. black people wasn't going to get COVID-19. Right. And then, of course, then I, I got it. <laughs> we're so happy to see you doing well, looking good. Yeah. Diamonds, really, everybody, the whole world was concerned, you know, so we're very um, happy for Exactly. Good. Two thumbs up and constantly praying for you because I know you've got to yet rebuild yourself and everything. So yeah. All right, all right. Good for you. Good for you. Let's see what else we have here? Um now what's what's um what's next for Africa now since the COVID Well, I tell you that the tourism industry um has greatly impacted oh, yeah. the entire continent. And I think that that's where a lot of countries was making tons of money. Um, right. It's one of the most viable industries driving um, the continent's economy. And without it, they are gonna feel it pretty bad. Um, one of the things I know that is still going strong though is agriculture because right. they gotta eat. You know, so, we gotta right. eat too, you know. And uh, because Africa, in my view, is more from the ground to the table, then right. I, I think that that's one area that's going to continue to thrive. Um, I know one area that also is being greatly impacted, and not just tourism hotels, but obviously the airline industry. I've been watching what's going on with South African Airways because it was already in trouble. You have to shut down, aren't they? Well, every day it's a developing story. Now they're talking about opening it up for investors, investment partners with South African Airways. It's the only national airline in the country and I, or the primary one. And I really hope that it does survive. It's been such a staple for South Africa's brand literally since the ending of apartheid. So I'd like to see it survive. I really, really would. 
let me ask you this, Jackie. Well, South African Airlines was at one time like the premier airline, like African Airlines. Then Ethiopian Airlines kind of just took over. Took, took over. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what the the difference is. Cause I mean internal challenges, just okay. internal public private partnership relations or just the way internal um, executives was trying to drive it. Well, I'll put it this way. A lot of times government has the mandate, but it's the private sector that actually has the know-how and the implementation. So sometimes marrying the two can actually be a challenge. But I really, really want to see South African Airways survive. It's a beautiful airline. I typically have flown on it when I go to South Africa and other places on the continent. And it was even a better flight for me than Delta, to be honest. I enjoyed it more. They had more food, more leg room, everything. Yeah. yeah it's definitely uh it's definitely changed. Um yeah, because I would say the last time I flew on South Africa in the uh I don't know, it was uh I flew uh, a couple of years ago because my flight was delayed. I flew from Accra to DC, uh, South African, and uh, it wasn't a good flight. Nah, I mean it's just the the. I, you know, I like Delta. I, I love Delta. Well, my issue with Delta on that international flight was the fact that it didn't have food, and I felt like. Um, it just didn't, it wasn't ready for such a lengthy flight because I went on the direct nonstop from Atlanta, which is, which at the time was the longest flight in aviation, about 17 <laughs> hours or so. Um, but I was always hungry on that flight. The portions of food were smaller and they were a little less accommodating. But South African Airways, their primary airline goes internationally. So it was staged for something like that. And um, I felt that Delta just wasn't ready. And maybe I was going too early in their flying to South Africa nonstop and they didn't know how to service it. Maybe they've been, they had improved, but since then I would always just fly SAA. Yeah, cause I used to, I used to fly SA from DC to uh, Senegal. To that right, and, you right. Know, that was- it was cool, but then the last time I flew from um, uh, Accra to uh, DC, it was. I mean, it was like the plane. It's like the plane, like the plane, the upkeep of the plane wasn't. Really, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I I get um, the direct to Dakar, and then well, it's a nonstop. Well, it is a non. It's a one stop flight to South Africa on SAA. Right. Go to Dakar and right. then to Joburg or Cape Town. Yeah, so hopefully they. Uh, yeah, hopefully they um stick around. You know what? Let me ask. What uh, industries will survive this? I think uh, this COVID situation, especially especially here in America, Jackie. Like, what what industries are going to struggle or are struggling or aren't going to make it? And which we know Amazon's not going nowhere. Uh, they make it, they're making more money. Amazon, Target, Walmart, those stores that are continuing to stay open and service everyone while this is all going on, clearly they're going to survive in terms of the U.S. Um, I think restaurants are going to really be impacted globally um, because I just don't know what the answer is in terms of how do they come back up to speed to where they were without exposing us, you know. Or the concern of being exposed. I'm not going to say you're going to automatically be exposed, but I just, you know, those kinds of businesses. And then I'm looking at sports. You know, I think sports, the sports industry is going to have a hard time. All of them. I mean, crowds, any any kind of event or business or, you know, any event that carries a huge crowd of people is going to have to rethink that from even the um Film industry, you know, are we going to be able to pack out movie theaters going forward? Right. You know, do, what do you think? Are we going to be able to pack out movie theaters? I think I think over time this is going to, I'm not going to say go away, but I think people will just wear your mask. I, th- I think people will start, will start feeling comfortable going back to the, um, 
theaters and you know folks love their football especially their college football so i think over time people will start you know going back to the uh sporting events as well it's just going to take time but i think it's just that's just too much money that too much revenue that you know these organizations are going to lose out on i don't see them but know. what do you think about um you know from award events all of those kinds of events that thrive off of the crowd and you know they can still broadcast maybe on television and online but the energy would be totally different if mm -hmm. the crowd can't be at the Emmys or even at the BET Awards or yeah. at the uh, NAACP Image Awards you know without the people what what do we do no, it, it, it Mike just brought up something in the uh, chat room. Like, uh, entertainment industry is screwed. Like, like, like you said, live performances, concerts. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I think it'll get back to somewhat normal in the next year or so. I just, as far as that goes, you know, the live venues and and all of that. Like, because they they canceled Coachella this year. Right, and they've canceled um, basketball remember yeah 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 well so i think over time it's gonna come back it's just when um is is the question but uh yeah that's crazy so i wonder what what opportunities are, are there to well one thing i know anybody doing anything digitally you know yeah. it's exploding and um there are even some new uh online platforms that are designed to harness all of this new digital activity so uh, that's another space where there's an incredible amount of growth now are you getting paid for it is another story unless you're signing on with a netflix or uh bet plus you know some of the networks that are actually looking for massive content right. you know um, but then just the exposure also gives you opportunity to make money within your audience base. I think, you know, it depends on what a person has, what they're selling, what they offer, you know, but I do think one thing is going to be redesigned is how we work in corporate America or even corporate Africa. The fact that people are able to engage their work from home. I think that that's going to change the fabric of that environment soon. It's going to go back to what we were aiming for in the early 2000s when the internet first happened. We all thought we could work from home, but then that didn't all work out. But now since the need came up and a lot of people have successfully done it, I think that may grow as well. So even home-based businesses will expand. Somebody said uh, drive-in theaters are going to make a huge comeback. That is highly likely. Uh -huh. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh also, uh, someone in the chat room brought, in fact, here we go, Jackie, you brought this up. How is this going to affect corporate America? Yeah, I think that people are going to be able to bargain the opportunity to work from home more and uh -huh. find themselves being more productive. You know, there was a huge wave of that when we came into this century. We, you know, 2000, 2001, two, three, four, all of that, everybody was trying to see how they could work from home. And this was even before home-based businesses blew up. It was coming, but not to the extent it is today. So a lot of people who have had the opportunity to work from home still get paid, still stay on deadline, but yet having to manage their kids and schools i mean everything is being revamped but i really think we needed something globally to slow us all down i felt like everybody was trying to be faster swifter more amazing that we were just gonna blow up you know and so i'm you know feeling like the world has been flattened and everything slowed down so we could take stock in who we are our families our relationship with god and just you know, live life more authentically, as well as work more with a purpose, because sometimes people's careers, mine included, you just keep going on and on and on and on. You don't really see what's important. And right. sometimes you need to pull back and reflect and as well as really strategize, where do you want to be when this decade ends? Right. And if you're not 
assessing that now, you know, five years from now, maybe too late, you know, or you might have missed a significant window of opportunity just because you didn't take stock in slowing down and taking a look at what you're supposed to be doing now. And I think that that's, this has been pause, cause for pause, you know, and I think it's been a good pause. Yeah. Pause Commercial. for pause. Commercial real estate will suffer badly. Well, they're, they're, well, they were supposed to, they were talking about opening up the malls back in Atlanta Friday today, actually, but I think they put a, a hold on that. Uh, but we work like office spaces. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I was working with a um, developer with regards to some unique um, work. It's like a live hotel, live life hotel kind of situation. And that's kind of not going to happen right now because the whole idea behind that was to take advantage of the acceleration of the market trend of the sale of high rise, you know, uh, high rises and that's just not people aren't just going to be popping and buying it you know like they were prior to this happening it's just some certain things are just not going to happen for another year or two if ever because it's very market dependent you know it depends on where the market is how the stock exchange is doing you know so many different factors economic factors and guys once again announcement my children's book this is round one. There's like six more coming. All right. My children's book, The Sun Loves Me, okay, is now available on Amazon in print. You guys have been asking for years, and I'm not going to lie. I've just been procrastinating. So go to Amazon.com, all right? Again, Amazon.com. Search my name, Dynasty Mirror, or put in The Sun Loves Me, and support and get your children's book. Let's see. Let's just open up a page. Open up a page. Open up a page. Here we go. Get your children's book. OK, go to Amazon.com. Get your children's book. OK, more are coming down the pipe. All right. So finally available on Amazon.com. All right. Go ahead, uh, Jackie. Yeah. So, you know, and, and speaking of books, you know, this is the best time to write a book, to launch a book or to even relaunch a book. Sometimes you are ahead of your time in terms of releasing um, breakthrough information or revelation knowledge or just sharing your story. Everybody has their own time, you know, and this is a great time to be writing amazing things. I know I've read a couple of things that you've been writing right. Dinah, on um, what's that site called? Medium. So basically Medium. I'm, I'm writing another. So I'm, I'm just, I'm focusing on just my creative side and putting it out. That's what right. I'm, I'm using this time wisely to, to really, yeah. You know, yeah. some people like they, they, they say with when the stock market crashed in the twenties, some people lost a lot of money, some people got rich. So, you know, I'm um like I said, right now I'm just taking advantage of this time to really develop myself and you know, build a legacy for my family. And you know, that's what I'm doing right now. Right. And and I think that that's what we all should be doing. I think that 2020 is um it, there's so many codes in the number 2020. For me, let me just share a couple of them how I see it. You know, for me, it means equal, and we have all been equalized. I don't care how much money you have, or anyone has, or doesn't have, we all got equalized and brought on the same level in life due to coronavirus. And because no money could save anyone from the issue. So that was brought on equal footing. Then 2020, of course, means clear vision, that you get clarity for your life. Uh, Why are you here? What is your mission? What gifts have you been given? I always tell um, people that no one came here empty. We all came here with something. And our talent has been given to us to help us achieve whatever our life mission is. So it, it requires us to be clear. And then the other thing I see about 2020 is around just um, accepting or kind of like demanding even that people meet you on equal footing, that there shouldn't be any lopsided relationships where one person is giving everything and the other person is giving nothing or any kind of unevenness that is even Stephen is what I always say, even Stephen, that you should be in 
mutually rewarding relationships, mutually respectful relationships, mutually investing relationships. Don't invest in people more than what they're willing to invest in you, especially on the love side of things. And then also speaking of that, I talk a lot about how love and money is on the same vibration and that when you don't have one or the other, get one and you'll get the other. And if you have money, get a good loving relationship because it really does help you hold on to your money. It really, really does because it, it's it's on the same frequency, love 104.7, money 104.7, just like a radio station. And you don't want to have one without the other. It creates another aspect of lack in your life. So you definitely want to keep money flowing to you by walking in love as well and having loving people around you. 100%. Let's see here. What, um, so what's the name? What's the new game plan for Africa post, post COVID 19? Um, I say, well, first of all, we have to wait until we're able to go there. But uh, in terms of, I'm going, Africa, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going in August. I know. I saw you. <laughs> Um, I hope you go in August. I really do. You and your team. Um, I want to go. I was really trying to get back to South Africa until, you know, all this happened. So um, as, as some amazing things that was going on there. Um, but I say that, you know, it probably will be a great time to buy land, you know, invest in real estate right. after this is all over. And I think that it, it, being a part of any kind of tourism to Africa is going to be great when this is all over. I think that there's some uh, industries that the African-American or the diaspora community will actually impact the growth of Africa. And I also say we should still be living as minimalists here in the U.S., mm -hmm. saving our dollars for a bigger spend or a more meaningful spend in Africa, because clearly our money, our dollar will take us further there than it will here. I really don't care about what's happening here to be shopping and buying stuff and going crazy because I'm wasting money and I'm wasting spending power in Africa if I'm, you know, spending too many dollars here. So I really, really, really advise people be a minimalist in America. Keep your eyes on Africa. Watch for opportunities for real estate and to maybe partner with businesses that were strong and have really good growth potentials on the ground. That's going to be important. One thing we know when this whole thing recovers, everybody in the world is going to be getting their hair done. So I will say that hair salons in Africa can be very good business, especially if they're situated in a mall because they shop as much as we do. And there is a growing middle class that will not be as impacted by this as um, other, you know, uh, economic sectors. So, yeah. Yes, let's see here. What, um, well, who's locked down and who's opening up? Like what? Um, okay, well, South Africa, Ghana, I think the president of Ghana, um, I think they have the... I think they just opened up their borders. Uh, yeah. Ghana did, yeah. Yeah, today, May 1st, happen, a lot of things happen in Africa today, May 1st, right. where countries, either they were not completely opening up, but they were moving from, you know, the, the five alarm level to four you know, where people can travel certain hours of the day um, and that people who are still doing essential services can travel more fluently. And then South Africa had issued that um, after 8 p.m., you could travel for a certain amount of hours. Mm -hmm. But they're still being cautious because they had one of the highest rates in the continent. I think that they did. Yeah, next to Egypt. Egypt had a lot of cases. I thought that was interesting. Well, the places with a lot of tourism are them because the tourists brought all that in. So like with South Africa, it's the tourists that brought it in. Definitely, definitely, definitely the tourists. Yeah, because even Senegal, you know, so many countries had such small, small, small percentages, but they were just being cautious because they didn't want other people from their bordering countries to come in that also may have been infected. 
Right. Yeah. So, but by June, I think Africa will be more open than we will here in the U.S. I'm pretty certain that they yeah, will. Yeah, because I'm I'm going in August. Uh, right. Guys, <laughs> hit that like button. Please share. Also, please subscribe. Again, please subscribe. Uh, Jackie, tell everybody what you do. Tell them about Profile Africa. Yes, Profile Profile Africa Worldwide. We're a brand strategy, public relations business development media, what we're doing and have been doing really the last two years, where you may not have seen me very active out doing a whole bunch of different things because I've been focusing a lot on media, media opportunities. And primarily because I know where this whole digital landscape is going and how critical it is for us to control the narrative and share our own stories from our perspective. And so we've been working a lot with some of the TV network people, which thus uh, lies why I'm even here in LA, uh, to look at where the Africa story is even being told here in the US and across some of the new digital platforms that are forthcoming. So, and then we help people still with their brands in terms of growing and penetrating new opportunities in Africa and um, affixing them to critical uh, platforms and programs that helps their business grow. That's good. Let's see here. Uh, guys, I sent Lou Major the link so, you know, Lou could come on and, you know, ask Jackie some questions. So, you know, we're, we're going to shout out to Queen T, everybody in the chat room. Um, you know, home, working from home, home-based businesses are picking up too. Like in my in my business, my care bars business, it's it's, it's growing because people. That, you know, in fact, I read an article, Jackie, where um, like workers are being furloughed, who are also getting unemployment. They're like, look, I'm not going back to work. Oh yeah, no. I mean, um, if you filed your taxes in the last year, then. Everybody got twelve hundred dollars for the most part. If they're I haven't got my check yet. Well, are you getting it in the mail? I can't. Every time I go to log into the system, they're saying we're still. We have to review your. You know. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't got my money yet. Oh, okay. Well, those who had um, filed their taxes in the past and they had their, the government had their banking information. You know, a lot of people got it when it first came out and it was real quick, fast and in a hurry. But for those who didn't have that and just had their address, then the check is coming in the mail and that takes a bit of time. But a lot of people, because they can create business from home, don't want to go back to corporate America, right. you know, and see the more golden opportunity in building a strong home based business. So I fully understand that. All right, you have to sit over a little bit, Jackie. But my hat, everybody, you wish you, uh, I, I made it happen. We have Little Lou Major. Uh, ask, uh, we have Miss Jackie Johnson, who's a very dynamic woman. You know, people want to come on and, you know, Lou, okay, Lou, disclaimer. Okay, you know, oh, not, Jesus. Oh, you know no cuss words. We can't, we just can't do it, Lou. Okay. By the way, did you, you this is kind of messed up, man, that uh, I come on and I look terrible because I'm all quarantined out and I ain't got no lineup and you got your shit fresh. Yeah, I'm cut gonna, fresh. You got a haircut. Yeah, I only got a haircut today. So I mean, you, you, the, the first thing you did outside of quarantine was cut your hair. Listen, I was the, <laughs> listen, I was the only, listen, Lou, I was the only person in the barbershop, me and the barber. You know, I heard, yeah, I don't know where this was at, but apparently, like, as soon as quarantine was over, man, a whole bunch of people went and got their nails done um, somewhere. I don't know if that was. Well, was see, there you go. No, Go I do my own. I do my own. Just for the record, I do my own. So hey, Lou, <laughs> I didn't Lou, go Lou. into anybody's salon. No way. Hey, y'all, let me break this down. So I went to the barber today. My barber made me sign, uh, 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 what's it called? A, a waiver. Uh, yeah. Maybe not keeping him liable for nothing. My barber had on his uh, a respirator mask. He had on his steel mask. Yeah, man, it's just, this thing has changed everything. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 you know, from what I can see here, it looks like people are trying to brainstorm ways that they can, uh, I guess, 
free themselves from the corporate uh the corporate world huh i i i really my wife was right i look like a brute i actually uh-huh. kind of like this look on me actually i look uh i look like exactly what i am like i, I should be going out and hunting a deer or an antelope or something and killing it with my bare hands you know <laughs> i like the disheveledness of it right i look like a true black man there you go uh-huh. well um my question to you, J- Jackie, is what's kind of motivating you to do the, what you're doing now? Alexa, stop. Um, for me, it's building into the future of where Africa is going, um, especially in media and just so many opportunities. I, I really can't mm-hmm. explain them all, but it's just, for me, a much better space to direct my energy for the future, for building out generational wealth. I think that, we, in my opinion, I really think that as African-Americans, we've totally dug ourselves into a hole here in America or a hole was created for us that we'll never dig ourselves out of. Let me put that way. And I just well, feel that um, just the way yeah. things are set up here, mm-hmm. it's like, how do I want to spend the next half of my life where do I want to put my energy where I feel like I'm going to get the best return for my efforts? Mm. I can't mm. imagine being anywhere but Africa. No, nothing here can ever just keep me here. I can't even imagine it. I really cannot. I, I, I don't see any reason why I would. There's no Wall Street opportunity. There's no ABC, Good Morning America. You know, I it's nothing because I could have all that and more in Africa and then have these folks who pay me for being there for that. So why would I stay here eternally without putting some stakes in the ground? When you even look at right now, the value of the dollar, particularly in South Africa, I haven't looked at all the other currencies, but you could literally be a millionaire in South African rands by way of 51,000 US dollars. You couldn't collect that in a family to say, guys, let us become millionaires together, you know, mm-hmm. as a family. You know, you put in 10, you put in five, and this is our family investment fund that we take now to Africa and build a future. We get the ball rolling on something that builds out something for your children and your children's children. Right. We really what? don't have that kind of extreme opportunity here. We really just don't. Hey, uh, Lou, do you have earpiece and headbuds? Because there's feedback coming from you. Like it's causing it's an echo. Yeah, I, I could resolve that. I could just mute myself when I'm not talking. Okay. Uh, I don't have that stuff. So so I will do that. I'll resolve that. Um, okay. So to answer your question, to, stay, to follow, piggyback on what you're saying, I think you're absolutely right. Um, the reality is, is, is this. Um, America was never made for us and you know us black folks and i think it's very hard you know one of the the, the, the and, and I've, I've thought about this a lot you know because i've been in, in lockdown i can't leave my house so I, I all i have time to do is think you know and and i've thought about this a lot what i've realized is that for us black people it is very hard to walk away from america for a couple of reasons probably one of the biggest ones is we keep holding out hope that we're going to get our fair share. And I understand that. No, no, no. Before you laugh, Prince, I need you to understand that you're right. It is funny and it's stupid. But at the same time, it is hard to have taken the abuse that black people have taken, to continue to take the abuse. And, and it's like, man, I just walk away with nothing. And just to take and to just take that L, to take that 400 year L and for a lot of black folks, man, that's hard to do. Well, I'm not saying take that leap and leave everything behind. I'm absolutely not saying that. I'm I'm actually, (laughs) I mean, you don't know what I, what I, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you want to be in America, that's not a bad thing, but you, you have two choices when it comes to this, either if you're going to be in America, you need to be willing to separate yourself from the general American society. Absolutely. That means you leave the cities. That means you you go ahead and you buy the cheap land that are in low, po- low popular. You, you actually have to, I, I hate to say this, but you kind of have to steal the ideas of what the Hispanics have been doing for generations, which is if you look at what Hispanics do, 
if you look at America, they're actually very smart. What they've done is go to very much depopulated states, Nevada, Utah, uh, Wyoming. They're not in populous states. I mean, there are a lot in Texas, but for the most part, where they go to is depopulated states. And they buy up very cheap land, and then they build up their own communities. Now, for us, we would need to take their idea to a more extreme level, meaning we buy raw land and we build our own towns, our own school systems, our own everything. You, you either are willing to do that, which I know a lot of black folks may not want to do, right? Or you come home and you go back to Africa. There is nothing for you in America. And I know that a lot of African-Americans have a hard time hearing that. And I get it. If I was in a, you know, if when I think about it, that's hard to kind of swallow, to kind of accept, man, there's nothing for me here. But there isn't. Your our overall wealth by 2053 is going to be a big zero, big giant zero. Yeah, we get a few rich ones here and there. But what you notice very quickly is, let's say you become a very wealthy African-American. Right. Do you know what happens after that? Well, I'll tell you. So let's say a black man, one black man, we're going to go with the, the the model that people say. Oprah. One black man, one black woman. You guys work hard. You go to school. You get a good job. You work hard. Maybe you open some businesses. You finally start becoming a millionaire. You move out to the suburbs because you can't live in the hood because you've got too many niggas. Now, there's, a, there's, there's two. Uh, 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 bruh, bruh. Can I say bruh. Negroes? You can say can I? What can I say? Okay, you know what? Poor people. You have too many poor black Americans. Can I say that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, those are the people who are going to break in your house, steal your television, you know, those people, right? So you can't live around them. So you go, what are you going to do? You're going to move out the hood. You're going to go to the suburbs where you might be one of three black families or one of two black families or maybe even worse, the only black family. You have your four kids. You send them to those schools. That means they spend their entire life around white kids. They go to schools with white kids. They go to college with white kids. What do you think happens? They're going to marry somebody white. So all that wealth that you, that you busted your ass to accumulate, when you pass that on to your son or daughter, within one generation, it goes right back into white hands. So when you think about a system like that, all you would really be doing is generating wealth for the white society. What do you think is the future for all those rappers, kids? Those, in fact, you're seeing it right now. Patrick, Patrick uh, Mahomes, right. his father, it was a was a pro baseball player, first generation wealthy guy. Had his son, Patty Mahomes. Patty Mahomes now is now the best quarterback in the NFL. Half, but guess what he did? His father, his father, of course, he ended up being surrounded by my whiteness, married a white girl. We could talk about what, how you feel about that. Then now his son married a white girl. Now what's going to happen? He, he, they have a kid. It's a white kid. So all the Mahomes wealth, all of that, from his father all the way down, goes right back into the white community. It's as if it, it, just, it was just like a funnel. You, you understand what I'm saying? All of the Eddie Murphy, the, the, Eddie, Mur the Maddie, Eddie Murphy kids, they're going to end up marrying white kid, white people. The Tyson kid family, they're going to end up marrying white kids. So the reality is you could work all you want to, but all you're really doing is just continuing building wealth that's just going to go within a generation or two back in the white hands. So what's why would you continue? What are you holding? What are we holding on to here? This is a pride oh, issue. Oh, 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 hold, on, hold on, Lou. We built this country. We fought it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You absolutely built it. We absolutely built it. And you know what? What? We're going to have to let it go. And I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to tell you something else. If we're really going to be honest, if, if anybody understands the two quote unquote stimulus package bills that just passed is throwing people a few thousand dollars, people actually understand what's actually happening in America. And I could do that would be a whole new show. You would realize really quickly. We are not far away. Um. We, we're not far away in America from riots in the streets, people wearing a ski mask, like armed conflict. Because what's happening is 
it this has been happening for for at least the past 20 30 years decades the company the country is being deindustrialized it's being sold out for parts okay so like the your the elites of america sold the people out years ago and so it's not going to be long this the, america's future as a whole is not a is not a big one people are not making more money the chances of you getting out of poverty now in America is lower than it's ever been. Life expectancy is going down. The educational system is inefficient. And, and so uh, the reality is, 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 is what, you're, what you're fighting for is not even that good. You understand? So you're not even fighting for something very good. So what I would say is, look, Africa's got all types of problems. I'll be the first to tell you. You know, and, and, you know, Ghana, not so much, but Nigeria, I know, is very infamous for this. The power goes out from time to time. Some of the roads aren't paid. I, I love it. I love it. It's okay. But, but see, we yeah. offer the solution. Uh, go in and offer the solution. That's the thing. Exactly. Offer. That's what I was that's, right. that's what I was trying to say. Yes, there are. Now, Ghana doesn't have the power issue, but it does have its own set of issues. My point that I'm saying is that's it belongs to us. It belongs to us. I may have a beat down old. There's an old saying that, that, that they would say. I might have a beat down old shack, but it's my beat down old shack. So we may not have the richest. We may not have the prettiest continent right now, but it's our continent. It belongs That's to right. us. And so you even you could keep fighting for somebody else's country to try to get a fair shake in somebody else's country, and you're free to do that. I'm not here to. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. You know, I'm. That's not my job. But just understand what you're doing. You're fighting for somebody else's country when you could be fighting for your own. That's right. One of the things I'm really excited about that uh, Dynas is, is, is a big part of is we're in the process of right now putting a group together in Nigeria. We're going to build our own like farming town. I yeah. think that's cool. But I think like agriculture be will survive this. I tell everyone, I'm I'm a farmer at heart. I I when when I was full time in South Africa, I had an opportunity to live in a in an environment where we really were eating from the ground to the table. I could look out of my window and see cows and sheep and chickens, and every day I had these beautiful orange eggs, meaning that the yolk in the egg, when you scramble it, the, the scrambled egg was almost orange and not yellow. It was mm -hmm. that organic, you know. And um, just the food and how my skin had gotten so beautiful and I could eat anything without gaining a pound because it wasn't pumped with anything. And those were the healthiest years of my life on a consistent basis. Now I kind of go back and forth between the two. And sometimes I just can't even eat the food here. It's so vastly different from the food at home. It, it affects me, you know, physically, or I'll start feeling nauseous just trying to, you know, eat regular things here in the U.S. But yeah, I mean, that's why I say agriculture will survive this uh, pandemic and it'll be one of the thriving industries. And it's one of the industries that's continued to be stabilized during this time at home. And I know some like banging, just off the chain, amazing farmers from South Africa to Ghana to Kenya. I mean, one of the guys just reached out to me the other day in Kenya and said that I could get like a few acres of land for like $1,500 in Kenya. And that they are growing a variety of produce that they are providing even other countries and how open that market is for investment. And now that our dollar is so strong, that's something we can literally do right now. We don't have to wait till any kind of thing occurs post COVID-19 because people have to eat all over the world. And that is one industry as well that's continued to thrive even more so be in greater demand now than it even was before it got, um, before the uh, pandemic occurred globally. So yeah, and how about this? Speaking of Ghana, I met a guy recently in DC from Ghana who was like a millionaire, but he was driving uh, Uber just to get out and meet people. So he told me that he's had for 18 years, a farm, a rabbit farm in Ghana, where the fur, from the rabbit to one 
company in China and the meat of the rabbit to someone there locally. He got like contracts with government and even other governments outside of Ghana, but within Africa, intra-Africa trade. And that he makes, I think he told me, I can't remember it was 40 or $80,000 a month. Every six weeks, he's putting out an amazing stock of rabbits and selling them in two different directions. And he's been doing that for 18 years in Ghana. And that his brother- He's telling the truth. Right, and rabbits his brother is one of the runs- ways. Yeah. yeah rabbit, rabbit, rabbit is one of the, I don't know. The problem is I don't, I, I try to stay away from things that I don't fully know, um, but how, how, to, how to do. But rabbits is one of the easiest ways to make money. One of the reasons is because they, they have a lot of kids very quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you could start with two rabbits and it's not going to take long before right. you get a lot. And and I'm a big believer of taking raw product and creating in user product, meaning like if that guy, for example, instead of just selling the fur outright, the pelts, and he actually started making the coats, he'd make even more. Mm. He could sell it directly into the European market. The meat yes. itself is of course, it's delicious. Exactly. And so, I mean, it, it, I mean, out there's also cows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's a cow costs two hundred fifty six bucks. Two hundred fifty six bucks, and 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 and, uh, and it's cheaper, even cheaper in Nigeria. And but then you get the milk, of course, the meat. Um, you know, out of the milk, if you process the milk down, you could get the the milk, then the cheese, then the butter, and well, sell that to directly to consumers. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is, all all we need as black folks. You know, I'm not, you know, all the, all you guys who are in America right now, it doesn't really matter how much money you're making. If you can just get a group that's of black, right. focus black people that's together, right. that's it. Now, that's right. Not just a group of black people, okay? That's important. A group of focused black come people. Come on, come on. And I'm going to tell you what, there is unlimited opportunity. I'm going to tell you, um, you know, speaking of South Africa, you know, I, 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 I have to confirm this. I'm afraid of saying it and I end up being wrong. Um, but for example, I've had for years and years and years and years and years, in fact, my first real estate deal outside of the United States was in South Africa. And I ended up, the guy ended up not paying me, but he paid me in land and he ended up giving me 1,754 hectares of land in, in an area called uh, uh about four hours outside of Joy, uh, outside of, of Cape Town. So 1,754 hectares of land. It's about 4,324 acres of land. Now, the, the, the guy, that's how he paid me for my services because he, he tried to sniff me out of money. But the guy who, lived, who, has the, who has the ranch right next door, he has like 2,000 hectares, 2,500 hectares. This guy was like part of the original apartheid government, when they stole the land from the, the blacks back in the 1940s, he got allotted something like 7,000 hectares of land uh, to farm, and it's been in his family since. And so apparently this guy's dad, got dad just died and it passed him down the land, but now he lives in Joburg, doesn't want anything to do with it because of, I guess, apparently some kind of guilt or whatever, and he's selling that. Now, guess how much he's selling 2,000 hectares of land for? Now, to give you an idea of what 2,000 hectares of land is, mm -hmm. that's 5,000 acres. acres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's selling 5,000 acres of land, okay, for $200,000. Guys. You understand? Now, I don't have $200,000 in cash. I'd have to sell a whole bunch of equities which I don't want to sell right now, but I'm pondering it. $200,000 for 5,000 acres of land. Does anybody do you understand know, from do you that know, is? Yeah, do you know what that land is zoned for? Ah, you, it, it's, it, there's no limits because it's in the Karoo. You can do whatever you want with it. Not well, only is he selling, no, but it gets, it gets crazy because he's trying, he's trying to get rid of it. Um, and he, he wants 200 grand for it, roughly. He's also including 50 sheep on it. 50 sheep. Wow. 50, okay. 50 sheep. And I'm like, man, I gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm pondering, like, man, how, what do I have to sell? 
to buy that. You know, <laughs> you understand? Like two, five thousand acres. That's I. I can't possibly fathom. I don't think anybody can fathom that. The best way I could fathom that is that's almost the entire size of New York City. I think that's New York City. Right. But what, the reason why I was asking you what the property was zoned as is because in South Africa, when they started talking about the white ownership of the land and versus, you know, giving it back to black people, et cetera, the issue came about around what foreign investors could actually purchase. And a lot of this mm. is over very valuable farmland. And if it's mm. farmland, I don't believe a foreigner can purchase it. However, there are strategic ways around it. And the fact that you say there's sheep there and it's such a large amount, then it's clearly probably not commercial. Um, but there are ways to get it done. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that in principle, foreigners mm -hmm. are not allowed to buy um, farmland mm -hmm. in South Africa, uh, agricultural property. You know. Well, but, again, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just found out about this, and and I and I don't want to say anything and be like, yo, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this or try to get anybody too excited until I actually know all of the information. Yeah. But just I was bringing that up because. $200,000, okay? If you get 100 Black folks together, $2,000 right. each, you own 5,000 acres of land. 100, 5,000 acres of land split between 100 people. That's like... And I'm still saying now, 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 one, now it's the time because uh, the dollar one, is so strong. One second, one, 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 second, one second, guys. Hold on, let me meet you real quick, Lou. I got to make an announcement. So everyone, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. And also, once again, the rolling out, more is coming. My This is my first children's book. Again, it was available uh, digitally. I finally made it available in print. So go to Amazon.com, okay? Go to Amazon.com, support, buy my children's book. The Sun Loves Me, okay? It's a beautiful story. Beautiful story, okay? Go and support the children's book make sure you go to amazon.com support the children's book everybody thank you so much go on support okay go ahead yeah so what i'm saying guys is while the dollar is so strong i mean it was almost 20 dollars 20 rands to the dollar when covid first hit south africa or started affecting the globe you know it hadn't really hit in south africa but you know anything happens in the world affects currency values right and before america got really hit so hard with covid-19 but yet it was happening globally it sent the dollar you know through the roof and its value in south africa and i tend to watch it just about every day because of some investments and things I have going on over there. And wow, I couldn't believe that it was like 1983, $19.83 about four weeks ago. And now it's right at 1880 something today. So again, that means $5,000 literally gets you a hundred thousand rands. And $51,000 turns you into a millionaire in rand value. This is the time to look at that and also to negotiate because if he's selling it in dollar value and the dollar has gotten stronger, then he should be selling it for less because the value of it is so strong, then you would be paying an absorbent amount in rand value for that property. And that might be over the real deal or you could negotiate a different payment structure or something because the dollar is so strong and people want that green money so when you can put cash on the table it changes how you negotiate your bargaining bargaining power at home because people can then take that real dollar and go do something really amazing with it that they can't do with land and getting loans and da -da -da, all those things that the economy is affecting one's ability to liquidate, you know, things like that. But real cash is more negotiable in that way because, and also keeping an eye on the value of the dollar and translating it into what does that mean in rands gives you even more power today. So $200,000 deal today 
is worth too much. It should be, you know, bargain for 175 or something or a different payment structure. And one thing I do know about South Africans when they don't, especially if you're dealing with someone that doesn't look like us, that has had a privileged and an advantage um, life of being, you know, not looking like us in Africa, then a lot of times they don't really want money. They just want to offload things. So payment terms can be creative in that sense. That's what I've found more often than not in South Africa when I'm dealing with other people. Um, and the fact of being an American carries weight as well as an African-American with people there. It gives a sense of credibility and reliability on resources and knowledge and skills that others would have to pitch really hard for. And people would trust us more to negotiate things. And then when you come with cash, given the high value of the dollar right now, it, it's a game changer. I'm telling you, I, if I could pack my bags and literally get on the plane tonight and go home, I would. I would go back to South Africa with my dollars and rock the world, seriously. Yeah. So when you're dealing with business in high dollar value markets, you do look at eager sellers and negotiate from a position of cash. And cash always brings the deal more in your favor every time. It's better than a bank wire transfer because it's the value of what it is right now at the moment of handing it over. A wire transfer, by that time, the thing could change and, you know, things could change. But when you have cash and you're able to, you know, put that on the table immediately, say, oh, all I have is $40,000 cash. Well, in Rand value, 40 times 18.80, whatever, still a lot of money to get started with. And then that's a good faith effort that you're going to, you know, engage the rest on different terms because it's our game. We have dollars that translate into so much Rand value in South Africa. You wouldn't dare seal that deal off of $200,000. I wouldn't allow it. I would say go back in there for one seventy-five, dollars and then negotiate payment terms and structures from there because it's, you wouldn't service yourself with the power of the dollar. When it's strong like that, it means it's strong. It gives you power. So take advantage of that. And then that could be a, a gateway into some reparations <laughs> that we're getting out of Africa for us to go and do great things in Africa. You know, guys, she's actually right. But I to, to, to correct myself, I, when I said two hundred thousand, that was the actual conversion as of today. I, I he's selling in rands, but I oh, okay. I converted for myself because I'm thinking about it for personal. I, I really wasn't. I was yeah, uh, you, even at I don't, that. I, even I have to sell a lot of a lot of a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of stock, mm -hmm. a lot of equities. I don't know how I would. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of it. I'm trying to be creative. But what the whole point that I'm saying. Is by that time when even right now during this COVID, but especially right after this COVID, you, you're going to have thousands of businesses go out of business. You're going to have it's going to be a fire sell, folks. It's going to be a fire sell globally. Your dollar is going to be strong. And this is the time to to make moves. She's absolutely right. That's what I'm sitting here thinking. Gosh, man, the opportunity to acquire 2000 hectares of land, that's 5000 acres to be able to give to my children one day. That's 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 huge. And I'm just trying to think, what can I sell to do that? Haven't figured it out yet, but I, I'm a pretty creative guy. I'm going to I'm going to find a way to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but the, the point that I'm saying is I'm using something personal. But what I'm also saying is, you know, that's the type of stuff that's out there. If we could just get a group, there's, I, I bet you that the same if you got a if you if we could get a group of 50, 100, 150 black folks, you know, we, we could that are focused, that are that that want to do something, that want to create a legacy. Africa's is ours for the taking. Not mm -hmm. only do Africans want to do business with you, that's one. So they're going to give you more favorable terms than they would to anybody else, and they really will. But then, in addition to that, everything is going to be on sale probably for the next six to nine months. You know, probably six to more nine months than, longer than that, probably because the recovery process is a little bit more staggered there than here. Just people aren't um, always able to move as quickly on their feet 
given natural things to economics, to skills, to what they have access to, how easy it is to get a hold of things and people. So that's where we, again, this, this literally goes back to why the diaspora has been declared the sixth region of the continent of Africa. I literally was there in South Africa on Africa Day, May 25th, 2012, when the Pan-African Parliament and the uh, African Union declared the entire global African diaspora as the sixth region of the continent of Africa. So it no longer has five regions, it has six. And primarily because they want to tap into our knowledge, our intellectual capital, our finance and our markets. And so it's an open book for us to be able to go home and fill those gaps. I never see a problem or anything, lack of development as a problem in Africa. I see it as an opportunity. And I wouldn't even be on this show if I didn't say this at least once every show, don't go to Africa looking for a job, go to create an opportunity for yourself and others. And the other thing that I'm sharing more often than not is the fact that no island will stand alone in this decade, none of us. I don't care who you are, how much money you have, how famous you may be, no one can stand on their square going forward alone. That it will take a united front, big and small groups of people, like-minded, like energy, like commitments, willing to put their shoulder to the wheel and their money where their mouth is, and go to Africa and begin a movement towards building out a lasting economic future and legacy with Africa. Because the thing is, Africa is going to grow with or without us. So we need to take center stage and be collective in our efforts because we are stronger together than we are apart and together each achieves more. You're right, if we got even just 20 people to put uh, $1,500 in each person and put something together and went to these viable African markets where the dollar is has doubled. I mean, the, the dollar against the rand had been anywhere from 12 to 15 rands a dollar, you know, prior to COVID-19. And now it reached almost twenty dollars. I mean, twenty rands to the dollar. That kind of growth is going to continue to take place throughout this process, and that is still where our window of opportunity is to come together, however large or small a contribution can be made by each party. But if we do something together, I really can't stress it enough. We can make much more progress together and we can have build we can build out legacies together because we came over here together so we have to go back home together because it's going to take that kind of united force and finance to pierce the door of opportunities that await us and i'm all for it that's what i live for i i, I don't have any other agenda um for being here other than to cultivate and, and even captivate unique and strategic opportunities that help build out our Africa future and legacy together. There's no media opportunity that I can even do by myself. I, my company is Profile Africa Worldwide. It's not just a name, but a mission. And the more we can tell our stories, speak the truth, show the world the beauty and the opportunities of Africa worldwide, then we can make progress as well because some of it is due to a lack of exposure. And because we are all together, me, you, Dinas, and many others, then we have to keep getting that message out. And that too is a helpful tool in bringing in the harvest of wealth that exists amongst us right here in the US and in other diaspora environments, as well as within Africa. But we can make it happen. Hey, Lou, go ahead and respond. And then what we'll do after that, we'll, we'll close out. So go ahead, Lou Major, anything you want to say? 
Well, you know, like I said, I think she's absolutely right. And, and Dinas, man, what you're doing right now is is really cool. You know, what I'm saying I, I want to give you, I want to big up you for this because, right. you know, you, you you what you're doing is 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 legit. You know, what I'm saying, and I hope you're not going to be doing it for much longer, man. I hope that you're going to be you're you're planning on being in Africa within the next, you know, two or three years permanently, especially with you being a prince and all. The prince wow. of Nigeria should stay in Nigeria, right? But my point is, you know, she's absolutely right. You know, what I would say to 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 um, everybody who's listening, who's interested, get a group of people together, get some people together, and be like, yo, let's 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 let's, let's do something. Let's let's and, and it's not we're not talking about a lot of money. You know, the average cash refund, I believe, in the African American community from the United States government every single year. It's four thousand dollars. That means the average black person gets four grand back in ca their tax refund every year. Four thousand dollars, and I believe that right after this COVID in a few months, it's going to be tax time. Cats are going to start getting their tax refunds. My whole entire point that I'm saying is the United States government is giving you the money that you can then take to buy your your future in Africa. That's right. Mm. Which, which which is actually kind of ironic. We've been asking for reparations for That's a long right. time. What yeah. if they told you they're giving it to you? If let, let's say you everybody here on average, you got your little four thousand dollar tax refund, whatever it's going to be. Which, by the way, remember that those tax refunds have not gone out yet. Okay. Louis Luck, do me a favor. I want you to email me uhuru at searchforuhuru dot com. Again, email me uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. I'm going to send you an autographed copy of The Sun Loves Me. Thank you for the super chat, brother. I'm going to send you an autographed copy. Email me, Louis Luck. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm mail you an autographed copy. Thank you so much, Louis. All right, go ahead. We'll make it. Okay. So my whole point is if, they, if they're giving, if they're giving you three, four thousand dollars $4,000, you know, as a tax refund, which they're going to give to you, they always give it to you. Why not take that money and say, I know you guys got bills. I know you guys got things you want to buy. I get that. But if you could take that same money and buy some land in South Africa, or buy some land in Nigeria, or buy some land in Kenya, you know, wherever it is, that's your that's your reparations. That's right. That's your reparations right now. I mean, Repeat the, uh -huh. the, United States, the United States government's funding your way back to Africa. Is that what you said? Like, repeat that. Well, actually, I mean, that's some gangster shit, actually. I just thought about that. That's who, you know, I, it just came to me at the top of my head. But that would be some straight up gangster shit that we would, in essence, you would, in essence, be doing. They give you back your tax refund, three, four thousand dollars. They got this COVID thing, which fucked up the economy. The dollar's overinflated. So you take that money, you go, you take the tax refunds that they gave you. You go, you take, you take your happy butt to Africa, you pick the country, and you you buy as much land as that money's going to give you. That is something you're going to be able to pass down for generation after generation after generation after generation after generation. I mean, that's just one way to do it, but the point that I'm saying is she is, she is absolutely right. And you're not, I need you guys to understand this. You're not, you really are not going to get another opportunity like this in your lifetime. It is not every day that you get a global pandemic. The last time we had a global pandemic that had this type of effect was 1918 with the Spanish flu. You are not. So that's a over 100 years. None of us are going to be here 100 years from now. Well, we might, depending on my technology. But the chances are none of us are going to be here 100 years from now. So you have the opportunity of a lifetime. So if you were planning on buying a new car, screw that new car. Take the bus for a few more years. That's if right. If you're planning on a new TV, screw that new TV. That's right. Watch that old TV you were using or use the internet for a few years. That's I know right. it sucks. I know you want to have other plans. I know that. But guys, you are not. I, 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 I'm, please listen to me when I say this to you. You're not going to get another shot at this. Again, there will not be another COVID-19 in your lifetime. It's just not going to happen. This is a blessing. And I know it sucks that you've been had to sit in your house for the past few months. Hey, man, I'm going insane. Uh -oh. I'm tired. you can literally. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Use this opportunity to perfect your skill, to become an authority on a subject or something that is of value even. Because one thing I've learned is that money always follows value every day, every time. And we have so much to offer Africa. You're right. I'm a minimalist. I don't care. I don't need a car when I'm in America. It just doesn't make sense. I can Uber anywhere I go. That keeps me not having a car payment, car insurance, the whole nine yards. When some days I'm in three, four days at a time working behind the scene, you know, so it's not a necessity. But if people could take just- it one step further. If you've got student loan payments you've got to make, we all got them. I'm going to put it to you like this. I'm going to put it to you like this. The value of what you will get. Now, this is going to show you how far this is because it's that serious. The value you can get right now out of Africa, right, will far exceed whatever penalties you would have to pay if you didn't pay your student loans for an entire year. Now, that's a lot. But it's, I'm actually serious. I'm not telling anybody not to pay their student loans. I'm just giving you an example. Because, because let's take this deal in South Africa, for example, right? You have a guy who's selling 5,000 acres to $200,000. That means for $2,000, you're buying 50 acres of land. I, I, I had to do the math. It took me a second. For $2,000, you're buying 50 acres of land. Somebody please conceptualize that. Right. Do you understand? 5,000 acres is the entire size of the New Jersey, New Jersey's capital. Somebody pointed that out. They're absolutely right. I went and quickly checked. 50 acres of land for two grand. That's what you can get right now today. Now you tell me what, what is more valuable? What can you buy right now? I will challenge anybody. What can you buy for $2,000 right now? That is better than 50 acres of land that is actually available. We're not talking about some fake thing. I'm saying, what can you buy right now for two grand that is better than 50 acres of prime African real estate? If somebody can tell me that, I'll buy it right now. Okay, guys, let's let's do this. Uh, let's go and we have to continue the conversation another time. Let's um, go in and close out. Jackie, we'll start with you. Well, Lou Major, we'll start with you. Anything you have to share in closing? Man, I, I, that's all I have, man. Guys, you know, this is this is your your window. Do what you got to do. That's on you. That's your decision. If you want to buy a car, I, I I respect that. Cars are nice. They do give you the ability to travel. Whatever it is you want to do, you you guys are all adults. I'm simply telling you that the opportunity that you have right now, and this is a fact. Look it up. You don't have to believe me. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm I, you don't have to believe me. Go look. Get get on your computer. Do your do your, do the research. But the opportunities you have right now, you will never have again in your lifetime. Everybody talks about once in a lifetime opportunities, but I, I'm telling you, this is this is exactly what this is. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You will not have another shot at this. So. You guys have some decisions to make. Talk with your families. Talk with your wives, your husbands. Think about this. But this is your shot. You know, this is your shot. And if this shot runs by you and you didn't take it, the, you will have your, only yourself to blame. Whenever the people who did take it are doing well and you're still struggling in the United States, you're still in the quote unquote struggle. Because I don't know about you. I don't like struggling. That's all I got. Jackie, in closing, anything you'd like to share? First of all, I just want to thank you, Dinas, for having me on your show today. It's yeah. always a pleasure to share with you and your amazing audience. Um, Africa will own this decade, 2020 and beyond. Don't get left behind. Africa population growth will outpace everybody else in the world within the next 20 years. So this is a very critical window of opportunity to get moving, get your eyes, get your money, get your intellect, get your resources, get your family pointed to Africa because everyone else is there already. Don't get left behind. If you want more information, feel free to contact me through Dynastamir. 
And I'm so looking Jackie, forward. Jackie, 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 put your give everybody your how they could contact you. People are asking your your email address. Okay, my email address is my name. It's Jackie J A C Q U E dot Johnson at live l i v e dot com. Jackie dot Johnson at live dot com, and you can also reach me on uh, WhatsApp, and my worldwide number is two o two. Six three zero two zero seven seven, and I do want to say this: that a couple of months ago, pre coronavirus, the president of Kenya was here in the United States in Washington, and I had a great opportunity to meet with him and share and talk to him. He was really coming to the U.S. to make an appeal to reopen the door of opportunity to come to Kenya and talk about the resources that are available there to help even African-Americans go there and do business and to also buy land. And as a result of that, several people from Kenya, from that conversation he directed me to, as well as some other chats, chat rooms that I'm involved in around Africa growth that have reached out to me about buying land, farming, agriculture, fashion. Uh, the textile industry is still booming and growing. COVID-19 through it and, and beyond. And so Kenya is another great hotbed and the value of the dollar is very strong there. And it's an open access, open market. They, you know, the president literally came to the US, not only just to talk to us, but big business as well, to be a part of the economic engine of East Africa. They are very much into intra-Africa trade between themselves, Rwanda, Uganda, so it's a lot of things going on in East Africa and Ethiopia as well. It's one of the fastest growing industries, uh, countries on the continent, Ethiopia is right now. And so, and they're gonna be leaders of the uh, human capital growth as well, the population growth. Uh, Ethiopia will top that um, along with obviously Nigeria. But I'm just saying that don't sleep don't wait on anyone. Take and seize your own opportunity to go to Africa, to invest in safe opportunities like this land. Land is always good. It appreciates, it holds its value. It can be used for so many things that can make so much more money. Agriculture is a great business. I really think it's gonna be one of the thriving industries of this decade. And I'm a farmer in my heart. I enjoyed my time when I lived in a very agricultural environment. And I saw even back then how viable of business it is. And young people are doing very well across the continent in agriculture. They really are. And we're starting to change the game in that area. So I'm looking forward to connecting with everyone and maybe coming on the show and sharing a little bit more Maybe the three of us can even pick this up at another time. It's been so hey, insightful. Hey, listen, if you got, you got, if you're gonna pick it up uh, to tomorrow. Just let me know. I'm here. You know, I'm here. I'd love to continue this, and then I can have even some more meaty content on some mm -hmm. critical opportunities and talk more about what countries are open and closed and where you know the real next thing is in terms of where do we really go from here. And then maybe talk more a little bit about how to bring people together who are interested in investing as a collective and what that really looks like and, and where where can we go, where are the real critical, uh, easy access, soft landings for people. Um, but I'm telling you guys, I really beg of you, stop spending your money in this country. Save your money and head to Africa. Absolutely. So uh, so we'll, we'll plan offline as far as a good time to come back on tomorrow. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Make sure you go to dynastymirror.com. Make sure you like, share, and, and subscribe. And again, go to amazon.com. Get you a book. Read it to your children, your grandchildren, your nephews, nieces, all that good stuff. Okay? Son loves me. Until next time, family. Peace. Thank you, Dynast. You're welcome.